Welcome to RNS Homegrown. Today is Saturday, the 12th of February, and we are working on a new project today, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Behind us, we have four stock tanks that we bought from Tractor Supply, and uh, we're going to turn them into raised beds. We're super excited because, you know, we need more raised beds. So you would ask yourself why the big beds uh and if you actually take a look in the video that there's, uh, they're on concrete blocks. So there's a reason for that. And if the actual reason is the weird little pile on the ground right in front of them. <laughs> so we're standing underneath our mulberry trees on the lower terrace of our yard. Fruitless lower... mulberries. Mulberries, sorry, what did I say? Fruitless mulberries. Fruitless, there we go. That's what they are. And so, um, what happens is these trees, they set out little tiny roots. They're hunting for water, just like any other plant. The trouble with these, when we plant underneath them, that these little roots cover the ground and then they kill the actual plants or make them not grow very well. So in order to alleviate that problem, we put them, we're gonna put them in raised beds and that's part of the project we're excited about because we might actually have successful planting over in this area in our yard. Yes, and it was really, really shady in this area, but right here, Roger's in the process of cutting down another fruitless mulberry. That's gonna help give us a little more sunlight through here. And we're probably gonna need to thin this section of the tr this tree out to give us a little more sunlight too. But um, what we had here last year was a failed attempt at doing an in-ground raised bed using these blocks we had done a four by eight section and uh, we thought that we would, because we know we have these root problems, but we thought that we would um, alleviate that problem by lining the whole thing with um, landscape fabric. And that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So the whole bed filled up with roots right through the landscape fabric. And this poor guy had to remove all that last weekend and it was a nightmare. And when she says fill up, she's not kidding. So the pile you see on the ground is probably, what would you say, maybe a third of maybe, what we pulled out? Yeah. If you look up close to the camera, this is how dense that big old pile. So you picture that about three times pulling it out of the ground. And so you can imagine also why a, a plant couldn't, uh, no matter what kind of plant it was, wouldn't be able to survive very well in that while a tree is being very aggressive and looking for water. So we're very, very hopeful for this new project that we'll get new planting and we'll kind of walk through the process as we go along. Sounds good. Our first step is going to be to level these out and get them placed. We're gonna um, put them up on these blocks. And what's really nice is with them being on the blocks, it's bringing them even higher. And uh, we're not gonna have to bend over very much to, to garden in these beds. But we are, um, we're leveling them out and then Roger has a metal drill bit, a half inch. The biggest one we have is a half inch. So we're gonna put a lot of drain holes in here mm -hmm. and then start the process of filling them up. These guys are our friends in our yard. They're our friends because they end up eating bugs that uh, tend to eat our plants. So 
And we, any time that we can get lizards to get in our yard and eat these bugs, we definitely want to encourage them. So the next step that we need to do is uh, fill up our um, the metal raised beds and what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a lot of these wood chips that we still have. From this view it doesn't look like wood chips because we've had so many of these pine needles fall down into it so it's going to be wood chips and pine needles and you'll see some white stuff on the top. Roger sprinkled some uh, wood ash from when we burn our all of our cardboard boxes because we buy so much stuff online but we we burn all our cardboard and uh, and our fireplace uh, wood and we put that into our compost so we're gonna fill up probably about one third of our beds we're gonna in the bottom is gonna be wood chips Look at that. Pretty cool.
Okay, now here's where we're at so far. After putting two of those trash cans of wood chips into each raised bed. Oh, you found some worms. Nice, Look at that. Ones. All right, I'll tell you in just a minute where that worm came from. Um, well, I know you know. <laughs> Actually, so anyway, we put the wood chips in there and then Roger took three bags of the raised bed mix and put in each one of these raised beds. And this is what level we're at so far, if you can tell. And now what we're doing is utilizing around these trees, what we have are the big round pots and the little square pots. And we're utilizing the soil that's in these big round pots because we're redoing um, what we've got going on. And um, I've bought these smaller round pots that we're going to replace these big ones with. Now, um, and he just got done dumping some of those pots of soil in here. And that's where that worm came from. Because that soil was full of worms and full of worm castings. And so I think it's going to inoculate these beds really well. But the whole reason we're using that soil is because these pots were pretty much a fail on our part when we first moved here. We got these pots from Home Depot or Lowe's and what we did, as you can see, we cut the bottom out of these pots and we put them around these trees and planted uh, some of our herbs in there and they grew really well. But what we didn't realize, and we wanted it to be open. We were just trying to make a small raised bed out of it and we didn't care that it was open in the bottom. But that's, that's the first time we learned that these tree roots are very aggressive and they grew up inside. And um, so we thought we fixed that. We cut the tree roots out um, from underneath and then we put these pavers down. And they, those pots have been sitting on these pavers and that's been working out okay, except that over time, some of the soil washed out the bottom. And then what you end up with is a little tiny section of soil bridges the gap in that opening to the ground. And then just from this one little piece here, that whole pot filled up with roots. So, We've decided that we're just going to switch to pots that do have bottoms in them. We're going to go for smaller pots because I really don't need the herbs to, I just don't need to fill up such a big pot with the herbs. And um, so we're going to go with these smaller pots. We're going to leave the bottoms in them, um, raise them up to where there's plenty of gap between them and the soil and continue. And in these square pots here, these are calendula flowers. And these calendula flowers are what I use to um, make a skin cream. And I'll be showing you that pretty soon because I need to make some more. But um, I still have the flowers from last year that we grew. And these are new plants that sprouted up this year. So it's almost time to get a bunch of blooms and start drying these this year. And over here around this tree, same thing. We've got five pots over here in the same situation. So uh, what I've done is um, I dug out some of the herbs to see if I can save them before, um, before he takes these and dumps them into the garden beds. But here's what I saved. We'll see if they live. I've got um, fever few and tarragon and thyme, a little bit of mint, uh, valerian, um, stevia, and I think that was it. The lemon balm was so matted I couldn't get any out of that and so was the um, sage. It was also so matted that I couldn't get anything out of it. 
Oh, and I also have oregano down here. I am, um, I do, I, I am starting seeds in the house of all of these things as well, just in case these don't live. So, and maybe I'll end up with more. And maybe I'll share if, I, if anybody wants any, if I end up with too much. And I just want to take a moment and show you what's growing over here in my little flower bed. These are yellow ranunculus. I just love them so much. And then I've got some little daffodils that we've got sprouting up here. And they're so cute. They're little and dainty. and off all day we are done with this most of this project all I need to do is um, finish up the irrigation but it is primed and ready for that um, we ended up putting two more bags in this I'm sorry two extra bags in this one two extra bags in that one because these two are a little bit wider and these two only required one extra bag and so here's what we, we are left with. And each one has a half inch poly tube sticking up and I'll be able to tap into that to run the drip all around here and we can start planting anytime. I also have a partial sticker there still to remove and I need to remove that whole sticker there. This ends our week. This ends our week. So we're very happy and proud that we got to after uh, we were sick. We got what everyone else has been getting. So we were productive our first week back in live world. We mm -hmm. got our planter beds um, done. Uh, Sheila did some planting during the week. And we feel very successful yeah. considering prior to that we were down a couple weeks. So, yeah. so we're hoping that you all have a had a blessed week this week. Yeah. And... Uh, we want to thank you for watching. Yeah. So please subscribe and share your this video with other people. Our, if you think that they'd be interested in this content. Absolutely. So thank you very much. God bless you. And have an amazing week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.